So my first question will be for the both of you, of course. How long ago did you guys get started, or started working on um, the screenplay for Knights of the Zodiac? Doing some math. Yeah. <laughs> Feel, was it two years? I think it's about two years ago. Yeah. yeah. And, and on, on, obviously, you know, they've been in kind of developing the movie. Well, Yoshi was on it, the main producer, for like 10 years. Yeah. And so, you know, and they were also doing the animated series simultaneously. So there was a lot of different stuff going on. And when we came on, it was our job to kind of like figure out what the movie was supposed to be in terms of all these other things that were going on simultaneously. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to... Um, so I'm a writer as well. So what's your process for doing a script? The, the best ones are ones where we start with character. Like, we identify the character, and then we start saying, what's the core of his emotional journey or her emotional journey? And before you even talk about the plot and all the action and all those things, it's trying to find a kind of a, a through line, an emotional through line that's going to carry us all the way through the story. Because with all the, the mangas and the anime, we know we have the action covered. We know we have these going to have great fight world building choreography and all that. Like so, so it's really just who's our main character? Why do we care? And making sure that is sort of at the backbone of everything. Every step of the way. And if you want us to get technical, we can actually talk to you about how we go about the writing of it. But I'm, if you tell me, that's okay. <laughs> At the panel. By my count, this is your fourth project together. I think there's two more upcoming. Can you talk about this working relationship and how maybe it's changed over the years? Yeah, when we initially got together, I think we both, we were writing separately and we wrote from sort of different points of view. I think I had worked uh, predominantly in production with sort of a stu studio-oriented company and Josh was more the, I don't want to say art house, but more just indie. Indie, yeah. And so... Coming together, we, I wouldn't say fought a lot, but we argued a lot. And I think it was like, it's great because then you're forced to justify everything you're doing, the why of it. And in the end, that sort of, you know, those two different points of view coming together, I think made for just, I mean, you know, our first screenplay became 10 Cloverfield Lane. So we're like, it's working. Let's keep doing it. But, well, we also, I mean, I think we grew up as writers, both of us along the way, because early on, I think we were both kind of writing. Well, Matt, I think, understood structure better and, and definitely what the marketplace was looking for. But we were also writing from instinct. And we got real lucky. Our first script did really well. And it just kind of wanted to write itself. But over the years, we've gotten really good. And we have a very specific process when we're looking at a story to try to figure out if it's a movie. And within 45 minutes or an hour of talking about it and going through the beats that we know are critical, we know if we have a movie or not. And then that's, that's And if you really don't figure efficient. it out, usually it means we're not the ones who Yeah, if it, it takes two or three days, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not for us, at least. Yeah. yeah. So we learned from Diego and uh, Madison that this story is essentially about Seiya, and as you both said earlier, it's about his you know character journey. We, we have like an, an ensemble cast with you know the, the knights and also Sienna, but you know how did you guys put that together? So I'm I'm just trying to think of how you know the original series, the original manga had happened, and then this is it, is it essentially its own thing, or it, it is. Uh, an original movie, mm. so uh, but it it is very much inspired by the mangas and the original anime, and as much as we would have loved to put every night in it and every story and every you just can't. There's just too much, and it's also we want this to be accessible to folks who don't know the underlying property, and if you were to you know throw everything in there, you don't have enough real estate to give everyone the proper introduction and story. So, you know, thankfully our collaborators were on the same page with us and focusing on that one key character. And, you know, we sort of look at it like you can't make the Avengers before you make Iron Man. And that's our hope is that this is sort of, you know, the, the first one. And then we get to dip in our toes into all those great characters that are in play yet. Excellent. Thank you. You kind of answered it a little. So what was the biggest struggle of adapting an anime into a into one feature language? I mean, I think anime specifically have 
really great raw emotions and dynamic kinetic kind of energy and storytelling. And so you've got to make sure you're getting those two things. And that's really more about the heart of the story that you're telling than it is about the visuals. I'll leave the visuals up to Tomek, who I think did an incredible job. Like when you watch it, it feels like watching anime. They did a really lovely job. But emotionally, it's like you got to be able to hit those really critical pressure points in people's hearts, like really accurately, because that's what anime does and that's what manga does. It just goes right to the heart of the matter. And then it's always got to feel like it's moving. And I think that that was, we had both of those things in mind the whole time we were writing it. We didn't write it to just be flash and, you know, in action, but we knew it had to keep moving while trying to hit, hit these touch points. What was it about Tomek's style and direction that made him the right director for this project? Well, when we had our first conversation with him, when we were getting started, involved in the project, he told us how he was going to sort of translate that anime style into live action. And it was so clear that he had a vision for it, that he knew exactly what it wanted to be. They were, you know, and, and then when we started seeing clips and some sequences, you know, cut together, he knew. <laughs> he had the clear vision and he delivered on but, it. But I think great. that's because he's a true, genuine fan of the genre. So, like, he didn't come into it as a guy who just wanted to direct a movie. He came into it as a guy who specifically wanted to direct an anime movie live action yeah, style. Yeah, it's, it's technique and heart. Yeah. Yes. And you can feel it. You can feel them both in the sequences. I have a question about how you guys worked with Toei and Yoshi in terms of you know, crafting the story. Were there you know, any earlier drafts? Did you guys go through a couple, brainstorm a couple of ideas? Or is the story that we're going to see the story that you guys had both come up with at the beginning? It was collaborative. Okay. Uh, there were a lot of people involved because this thing has such a long history, it goes back so far. Toei, the original creator, is Mr. Kuramata, I'm gonna say his oh, name yeah. wrong. The, the, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Sony had opinions, um, you know, Tomek obviously had a lot of thoughts. So it was a very collaborative process. There was a series of scripts to get to where we were. And, you know, some movies, you just, they wanna be carved out of stone all at once, and they are what they are. And then other movies are iterative, and, We've done it both ways, and it can work both ways, as long as you have collaborators working in good faith, and we did. They were really good partners. Excellent. Thank you. I had it, and I lost it. Okay, yeah, so even though you've had, you know, you have the source material, you have, like, the pretty much, you know, the story that you wanted to tell already from, you know, what, what's already been done with the anime and manga. Um, what would you say, like, when you're making the original story, when you hit a snag, like writer's block, how do you get past that? Keep typing. <laughs> <laughs> Being a partnership makes it so much easier because usually if we hit a roadblock, we can talk about it. And, you know, when, you've written, when you're writing on your own, we both have. You just kind of bang your head against the wall. But or you hand it off and wait for someone to give you feedback, and then you get back into it. But with, if I'm writing and I'm like, wait, I, I can't quite see this clearly. I'm not sure what I'm trying to do. Here you go, Josh. <laughs> and then, you know, he'll come up with something. I'll go right through it, and we just or, keep. Or a phone call or a walk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think some of the biggest problem solving we've ever done is we go on like a 20, 30-minute walk, and by the time we're back, what, nine times out of ten? Yeah. We've we, got our problem solved. One of us is ready to start writing again. Yeah. yeah. You talked about the importance of that emotional core that's going to bring the audience through from beginning to end. Why do we care about this property and Saya's journey? Uh, because he's such a great character from the get-go. I mean, you have this orphan, the only one person he's ever loved in his life is his sister, and she gets taken away from him when he's just a kid. And so he grows up just feeling so lonely, you know? And in that loneliness, he builds walls around himself because he's afraid of letting someone else in for fear of getting hurt again. And then someone comes to him and basically says, you're special, you have this extraordinary gift. I need you to help save the world. And he's like, save the world? The world's done nothing but turn its back on me. And, um, you know, and that's just, I think you can latch onto that journey and be in his shoes and feel that. I think we've all had those moments where we feel like, you know, we're alone and, and we don't have any allies, no one's in our corner. Um, but, you know, backing yourself up or turning your back, you're not gonna solve the problems. You know, you have to 
you have to step up and, and perform. And, and I think, you know, it's a, it's a universal story. I think that one of the things that makes Knights of the Zodiac timeless. So you guys mentioned that this is an original story and, you know, with all the, the history of the lore of, you know, Saint Seiya and Knights of the Zodiac is kind of, you know, at your feet. Um, I wanted to ask about the, I guess, the audience for this, uh, the Knights of the Zodiac. Who were you planning on hitting? They're all, there's always going to be the, like, the OG fans, but then you want to bring in those new fans, like people who have never grown up with Knights of the Zodiac. So how did you do that with the script, with the story? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great question. Uh, it's kind of a producer question, but okay. but no, but I'm, I'm I'm happy to answer it from our point of view. I mean, I think if kind of what Matt just said, which is find the universal story in the in the through line. Uh, and make sure that we play it up. Make sure it's accessible. I think it can be, you can tell a story for hardcore fans. It's also accessible to the general audience, but you have to go into it knowing that's what you want to do. And in a way, we might have been the right writers for this because if we were really hardcore Knights of the Zodiac fans coming in, we might not have had the perspective to have to understand how to tell the story in a way that would be, it would open itself up to everyone. Yeah, I think you make, if you, if you know something, you grow up with it, you love it so much, you just assume certain things that people right. know certain things about it that they're already tapped into it um, so sort of coming in with uh, you know not being totally immersed inside of it I think it allowed us to help the producers and the director and just sort of focus into what is that thing that makes it universal yeah and I only mean it's a producer's question in as much as it's their job to sell it <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> sorry I like I wish the panel was like right before this so we have you know, non-spoiler questions to ask. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's after it, you come. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're going to run to the panel after this. Well, well if we repeat or... ourselves. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for putting your thoughts in our head. Are you guys okay? Are you, uh... We're good. Thank we're you very set. much for your time. Great. Thanks, guys.